Hi guys, uh, welcome to the cook along. Thanks for your support. Um, it means a lot and it's been hard times for a lot of charities, as you can imagine with uh, this strange uh, world we're living in at the moment. Uh, but uh, a big thank you. We're gonna have a bit of fun tonight. First and foremost, I hope you've got the most important ingredient. That's a wine. Good, good, good. That's what I like to see. That's what, cheers, cheers. Here's one. Oh. So what we're going to do, we'll have a bit of fun. We'll, uh, we'll do the, um, what we're going to do tonight, we're going to do the, some ribs and then I've got some venison sausages, uh, which came in just uh, the other day from a friend of mine. Um, and we'll do the stir fry with the eggs on top. So what I would suggest we do to start off with, I'm going to put the ribs on because they're quite thick and put them on quite a low burner on this side and let them uh, take their own time. So we'll just put a few of these on onto the barbecue. They'll take their time. No rush. We accelerate that as it goes on, basically to seal it first. These are fantastic pork ribs from a local butcher just up the road. Uh, good old mate of mine, Dirk. And uh, we're very lucky in the Northeast. We've got... Uh, We've got uh, some of the best butchers in the country, and I, I don't just say that because I'm from here, but uh, they are great. We've got great products uh, for two of the butchers, the sausages, uh, the munchak, venison, they come from uh, Stuart in Barna Castle, and uh, the ribs come from Dirk, uh, Dirk Pidaway just up the road here is a great friend. So, big thank you to those guys uh, for helping. Um, and they've thrown all this in for us this evening, so very nice of them. We'll just put those on for a, give those a couple of minutes just to settle down, and then we'll start moving on. We've got plenty of time. A lot of people try and rush barbecues, and what happens? You end up with cinders. So uh, let it just establish itself there. It's just on a nice low, low burn. There we go. Just let that work its way. Uh, so tell me, guys, what made you think about doing this? Joining us, I'm very grateful, by the way. But uh, how did it all come about? Uh, I think I'll I'll explain that. Um, for the other four guys on here, it came about at probably eight o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. <laughs> um, for myself, I think it was a few weeks ago. Ian, I was watching the one show, and they've done a section on it. It's Alex Jones, I think, had done a. Yeah one the previous night and I just love cooking um, me and the other half and the kids we, uh, we always go, we always go to Italy every year because we love cooking we love we actually when we go we, we go and buy the ingredients and cook it ourselves in, in a villa in Sicily and um, so I just really wanted to do it but I'll be completely honest I forgot all about it until the congratulatory email came across um, <laughs> and then I'll let I'll let the other guys explain what happened after I got the email <laughs> well, I got a phone call like at uh, um, eight o'clock in the morning. I said, "What are you doing Friday night?" And I was like, um, "Why?" He said, um, "Do you want to do some cooking?" <laughs> and then he told me what had happened. And he said, "I got an email at ten to ten to midnight last night. I thought it was the winder." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's always got these scam emails, and then, he, and then and then it's sort of like you know, half, half asleep. He sort of. We chased what then and remembered that it actually ended it, and and then so I said, "Hi, right, that's on. We'll, let's do it." <laughs> yeah, how hard, Ian? How hard can it be? <laughs> well, no, it's not that hard, is it really? No, actually, <laughs> one of the one of the good things, if there is any, or there, there's not many good things about what we're experiencing at the moment, because but this is one of the experiences. How many times now do you, you, know, you I contact friends and you do a Zoom or a FaceTime or whatever, and uh, you know you, you actually. Get to know i actually know the names of my neighbors you know and there's things like that little things yeah. that i think brings communities together and uh that's the one good thing i've noticed uh, throughout this and there aren't many because i've lost uh, a couple of friends very close friends uh, to it uh morris who lived just across the village green here uh he, he had, did have um underlying problems with bronchitis but he was taken in rushed into hospital we called the ambulance for him rushed in and the following day I spoke to him and uh, he, he was gone a few hours afterwards. Wow. So uh, it's affected everybody. Everybody knows of someone or someone that's been affected by this. So, uh, but the, the one good thing I think is that people are now communicating probably a lot more than they ever did before. 
my yeah. um, my wife's mum and dad contracted uh, COVID nineteen, and her dad passed away. Uh, so it's very, very, very real to me. So. It is. Uh, it's like all these things; they don't take prisoners, do they? No. But, uh, but anyway, let's move on to something. We've got that off our chest. But uh, no, I think, uh, thank, again, thank you for all your help because I know Sarah, who runs all this, my daughter, um, she's been delighted by the response. And friends like Reedy uh, rang me up today. And I'm, if you're watching Reedy, uh, good day, mate. Uh, but uh, Peter Reedy uh, did his uh, spaghetti something or other, um, which he did. Which, uh, so. <laughs> Peter Reed, I'd never ever thought I'd hear about Peter Reed the cook. So there you go. But um, no, it's great. And a lot of people have got on board. Uh, at some stage, this evening I'll be named, uh, the person I'm nominating. Well, I might as well do it now, really. The guy that I'm nominating to uh, follow on from me is my great England teammate, with the geese fly over. Great England teammate, Alan Lamb, Alan Joseph Lamb. Hey. So uh, he's, uh, he loves his, he thinks he's a bit of a master on the barbecue. Because he comes from you know, a lot of roots in South Africa, and they call it over the, the braai. Hey, listen, let's have a braai, eh? And uh, so, Lammy, you will be the man that uh, I'm challenging. And one of the ingredients tonight that I have is a very enlightening little chili oil, which is quite uh, fiery. And uh, that's Lammy. That's, he's got something to do with this. It comes out of Stellenbosch in South Africa. But I'll, uh, you want to see it? There it is. And uh, believe me, if you've got, if you don't mind spicy food, there'll be a bit of that going on. But uh, the girls have told me I can only put it on my bit of uh, the spicy egg plate. <laughs> so we'll get to that. So the ribs, how are they doing? Let's have a quick look. It's all very quiet behind me. Yeah, they're cooking away nicely. We'll give them another few minutes, and then we'll uh, soft them. The, the actual stir fry and the eggs takes about twenty minutes in total. But we'll, uh, I've got the hot plate going and then we'll put the frying pan on, which my uh, assistant will hand to me. Uh, no, it's not the wife. She's not that daft. It's the daughter. But, uh, <laughs> we'll hand it up to me and we'll, um, we'll get that going. But that's a few minutes away. How, how's all your stuff doing, boys? Coming along steady? Looking good. I've got everything chopped off. Oh. <laughs> Ready to go. Well, we'll, we'll, do, we'll be using the onions and the chopped garlic uh, to start off with. There's some oil in the pan. We'll do that shortly, and then we just let that let that just cook away until the onions go brown. Uh, I'll start to go brown, and then we add the other ingredients. Then we add uh, the condiments to go with it. So, time for a slurp, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> so, what are you all drinking tonight, boys? What do you What do you uh, well, doing to enhance your cook? Bottles of Scrumpy Jack. <laughs> Scrumpy Jack. <laughs> Jalapeno, so we're, we're well away. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a bit of well, cider up on that in Somerset. So, Ian, I hear, I hear you like a little bit of haggis, according to my local... I love haggis. I, my absolutely. local butcher, I went to see him in St. Boswell's yep. stay, and uh, I told him what was happening after Dan had sort of put us in the picture. Yep. I says, look, going to be cooking with you. And he says, oh, Ian, great fellow. He says... Um, Used to be, used to stay at Edmund House Hotel and he visited Kelso. He, he Many used times. To come, Many used to pop in the morning and come and get his haggis from me and uh, Colin and Colin and me. No, no, yeah, we, I don't think a year has gone by where I haven't picked up haggis and taken it home and and the whole family enjoy it. So it's great. Even the the youngest grandsons, well, the youngest hasn't quite got to haggis yet, but he's only a year old. But the uh, the rest of the guys, you know, the four year olds, the seven year olds, the three year olds, and two or two year olds, whatever they are now. I lose count, but uh, it's very popular. Yeah, it's quite talk about I guess. Oh, sorry, on you, William. No, no. But what we what we do, we we when I've got all these friends coming over from Australia or from South Africa, I say, oh, we've got some haggis. Uh, they just came into season, and we were out uh, shooting. A couple of haggis came over, and we uh, so we've got them. They're fresh. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Aussies, the South Africans, and I just I leave that run for about half an hour. And then when they actually serve it, they go, oh, what kind of bird is that? I said, actually, that's, I'll tell you what haggis is after you've eaten it. But yeah. um, no, I love it. I love haggis. One, one leg shorter than the other, just run around the hill one way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul, Scott, what are you drinking? Yeah, I've got a bottle of Rioja. Oh, very good. A bottle of Rioja and 
Old Faithful. Still at Apple. Uh-huh. I'll do you one better. I've got a nice bottle of wine. I've got a bottle of Grillo. Um, Ian, I don't know if you've been to Sicily, but Grillo is amazing. I went to Sicily. I don't can see. There you go. Yes, but, okay. then, good old classic pint of tenants as well. boy. <laughs> hey. Awesome, boys. Awesome. Love it. I'm back. Sorry. Ian, Ian, you might notice there's a few different accents as well for, for five guys that know each other. Yeah, I've got that, yeah. Well, I used to... Or are you Scottish and one of us is English? <laughs> no, David's, David's English as well. Oh, well, that's Paul's kind of English as well. Yeah, Paul's from Gallish Shields. That's basically England, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. I'll get those on. I'll put a few sausages on there, lads. It's just starting to... Yeah, cool. So yeah. Ian, I used to live in, uh, Ian, I used to live in Scarborough, and that's where that's where uh, Daniel Ziggy lives. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever play there at Scarborough? Yes, I played Scarborough. I played there. Um, my England uh, debut in the day was at Scarborough against the West Indies. You're joking? I never knew that. I never knew that. That wasn't a lead question. I promise. Have you at Scarborough? That's true. I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Can I? Oh, <laughs> Try a few of these on. A few more on afterwards. We have a very hungry grandson who's just nipped out, but uh, you know, rugby just come back from Cardiff where he's been he trains with, he plays for Cardiff Blues and been in full training pre season. He eats what uh, I eat in a week, he eats in about an hour. Ian, you know when you were playing cricket? Yeah. And you were stood at the crate, who was the yeah. mo- ball that you were most scared of? So, walking down. Oh. I'm going to get hurt here. Well, first and foremost, if you get scared of anybody, you shouldn't be playing. <laughs> the answer I would give is, uh, who do I respect the most? Uh, which is a different que- uh, different question, but you know, we played against that West Indian side in the uh, 70s, 80s, and the early 90s. And they were arguably, in the mid-80s, they were probably the best side that's ever played Test cricket. They were magnificent. Had a, a quartet of fantastic bowlers and two more quartets waiting to get their chance. Um, so the West Indian team, they had batting strength. They had people like you know, a couple of Desmond Haynes, Gordon Greenwich, you know, pretty good players. Uh, Viv Richards, uh, Clive Lloyd, Alan Kershaw-Ann, you know, Larry Gomes. The list goes on. And uh, you know, I think that was the side that. You always think and you always pump up your team and you say, we can do this, lads, we need to play well. And I remember one of the guys, one of my senior players, said in the, in the team talk uh, the night before, he just said, well, we've got to play at about 120%. I said, OK. And they've got to play at about 60%. And then we've got a chance. Uh, <laughs> but they were just amazing. And I, I, I find it quite amusing when you listen to some of the cricket pundits and writers, etc. cetera. So, well, they can't be the best side of all time. They didn't have a spinner. Well, my argument to that was, when the hell was he going to bowl? You know, you know that, that, that speed, that attack just uh, knocked everyone over. They Basically, they knocked you out for about 200, 250. They scored 600 and bowled you out again for 200, and the game was all over. Uh, they were an amazing team. Um, we beat them in a couple of one days, but test matches, different game in those days. Who was the so, best bowler you ever faced? Sorry. Okay, those rolled over. Here. Now we're going to start with the stir fry. So get yep. ready, boy. Okay. Back for a minute. A little bit more. You can see right. Now we get the frying pan uh, assistant. Sorry. Daughter tweeting, texting, or something. But... Oh, serving wench, where thou out. The good job of I give you a snack. <laughs> I haven't got one, so you know, I'm just I'm shouting for nobody. Well, I can rent this one out. 
<laughs> right, so get your frying pan. Beyond you want my it, price range, pal. Beyond my price range. You want to get that nice and warm. And the first thing we put in is some oil. Yep. Some oil. Generous with the oil because it makes quite a bit of a difference to the whole evening. Put the oil on and then tip. Uh, Sarah, can you just hold that boiler? Mm -hmm. Just until I do this. Then tip, tip the old uh, chopped onions and garlic. That in. Just that away. Thank you. That will be coming into use in a while. A prepared area. So we just uh, there's a big spoon there. There we go. And just get that off. There. It'll take about three or four minutes to get that. There's so time for another slurp. We're all done. All got it in, boys. All yeah. in. All good. Good, good. Back, back in when you were playing county cricket, mm -hmm. um, if you can cast your mind back, does um, uh, the name uh, ring a bell? Is a spinner? Chris Sorry, Clifford. What name? Chris Clifford. Chris. Clifford. 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 Yeah, it rings a bell. I think he played for Warwickshire and Sussex. He was my um, uh, PE teacher at secondary school. So I just thought I'd um, uh, give him a was shout he a spinner? out. Was he a spin bowler? Yeah. 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 Oh, tall man. Blonde hair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy, Ian had the better of him. No. Well, he's a bit of a it bowler, isn't he? So you've got to give him a bit of tap. <laughs> One of them. Um... Yeah. Sorry, Paul. Ian, um, like, obviously, it's, everyone knows you've done a lot of charity and stuff. And I was speaking to my father-in-law just last night, and he said, I remember when uh, Ian plays John Brooks to Land's End walk. He says he remembers when you were walking through Edinburgh and there was a big crowd of people following you, things like that. But... Like, what one was the one thing that you'd done that you thought I'm going to do things for charity? Yeah, I just saw kids dying. Uh, I broke a bone against the Australians at Headingley and uh, got sent back to Somerset for treatment. Um, and to get to the hospital and taunt me, I had to go through the children's ward. And you, know, you can see children obviously ill, they're in traction or you know, they've got tubes sticking out of them, whatever. But the four lads just sat around table uh, playing one of those uh, board games and uh, I just said to the doc I said uh, you know what's the uh, situation are these just mates and he said no 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 these guys are seriously ill they have leukemia and I had no idea what leukemia was back then in the 80s early 80s and uh, he explained to me it was cancer of the blood in layman's terms and uh, he said look I'll tell you how serious it is those four lads, you've got eight weeks of treatment coming in every day. Uh, very surprised that any of those four lads are still with us in eight weeks. And uh, he was right. So that's how it all started. Uh, we got the walks going, very much a family concern as the years went on. But the thing that kept us all going, and this is quite important, it, you know, we did the easy part, we did the walking, we were shaking the buckets and got the money. But the money went into the research centre outside Glasgow. And um, those guys have worked miracles because in, in the mid 80s, you, kids with the most common form of leukemia had a 20% chance of survival. It's now about 94%. Wow. And that's what kept us all going and all moving forward. We did 17 walks in total, not all for leukemia. Uh, we did diabetes in Australia. Uh, we've, we've done a few different walks, but the um, majority of them have been through the foundation. And it's been uh, it's been a great journey, but uh, I paid for it in the end. Just threw my uh, onions and garlic, get those round off of it. A bit more time yet. Yeah, a few more minutes, a couple more minutes. But there, uh, yeah. So um, that was satisfying, and that's why we kept on doing it. But I'm paying. For, I paid for it. I had two years, two and a bit years. Uh, in that time, they reconstructed my spine, and they did both. Uh, the first hip on the right side and the left hip. So I was out of sport and that bit walking exercise and started to look a bit like Mr. Blobby. Uh, very uh, 
I don't know what to tell you what I got up to, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they uh, lost over a stone, stone and a half. Uh, still got probably another 12, 14 pounds to go before I'll be happy. But uh, no, so you pay the price, but there's a price I was more than happy to pay. Uh, it gave a lot of satisfaction achieving that stuff. You know, to walk from John O'Groats to Land's End, the best part of a thousand miles, and to do it in 33, 34 days, uh, I'll let you work that out. You know, it's, when you're collecting money on the way, that first ever walk, when people said, oh, you shouldn't do it, he's not going to be able to fit enough to play three. We raised over a million pounds just in the bucket, and that's wow. in the mid eight. So, the mid eight, you're probably looking at about 15 million. Sorry, what was that? Adding inflation in the 80s, you're probably looking at about 15 million for your first walk nowadays. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Ian, look, I, Ian I'm, Scot I'm Scottish. I'm Scottish, and I'm quite, uh, when it comes to cricket, I lived in Scarborough for five years. Love the place, and I get North Yorkshire, and look, we're Scottish. We just will never, ever fully embrace cricket. That's because we're crap at it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but you, did, you, played, you played football, though, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, did, were you playing both football and cricket at the same time? Uh, well, not at the same time, but uh, yeah, I was playing uh, cricket up till the end of September, and then played football through till either I went on tour with England or uh, in the early days, uh, labouring on a building site, plas plaster of labour, I did all sorts. Was, did you have to, was, there a, was there a decision to be made on what you would do, or was it? Was it was it a no-brainer? Yeah, I, look, you know, you know, I'm very lucky. I had a talent. Um, occasionally, you see people with this kind of talent, and they they, they don't uh, they don't use it. They don't uh, what they should. I, I was determined because it just seemed a great way of um, living and making a living. And believe me, playing sport for a living is a lot better than working. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why you've got a built-in barbecue and we've got shot hot ones. <laughs> what was that? That's why you've got a built-in barbecue and we've got shot bought ones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. The era, four of us worked for the same company and, and we and we wind each other up. We had great banter. What was the yeah. banter like? The dressing room and the table. You know, for your, for your career, what was it like? So you broke up then, sorry. And four of us looked together and we had great banter winding each other up and just having a laugh. What was the banter like? Uh, what? what, music wise? No, uh, no, I think it's him. Oh, banter, sorry, the banter. So I think he said bands, that's why I was confused. Me. No, the banter. Oh, no, no. I never did any of that sledging. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how's, I'll come back to that. How's your um, onions and uh, garlic looking? Softly, nicely. Oh, nicely. It should, be, should be just about there. Yeah. Bit of chilli. So, now, this is the really hard part. Put the chili in there. No, I'm, I'm going to put my chilli in as I cook it. Um, and a sous chef over there interrupting when it comes to cooking. I mean, everyone's got to, right, so just basically... Everything that I prepared earlier, that's a lie as well, by the way. <laughs> Just tip it into the pan. Tip it all in. That's what we put in? Just now you in? Sorry, I missed that part. Want to take over? Get that all in there. I'll pass that over to my sous chef. What do we spring onions? Everything. Just throw the whole lot in. Everything. Chuck everything in. Don't put the eggs in yet. Not the eggs. I put the eggs in first. Was I not yeah. supposed to do it? <laughs> 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 I, I, have, I have my mother-in-law and my missus just staring at me off camera. Just, just staring. Right, what do you want? Sorry. Good. Hungry. Hungry. Exciting. <laughs> Are you Fine. hiding? You know. Ian, they want to know how long this is going to take. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, while, while we're working that out, just get your, some of your ingredients. And I've got fish oil, Worcester sauce, Tabasco, 
Yeah. And I'll put a little bit of chili oil in as well. Just to liven it up. Putting that in just now, yeah? Fish oil, we might add a bit more as we go on. Uh, so what's going to be doing with all this? Okay, a bit of whiskey sauce. Now some Tabasco. <laughs> oh, fuck, I've dropped a sausage. <laughs> oh my god, the world has come to an end. Oh, it's not a rib. Put the lid on, helps it to get the advanced. I take it then you must be the footballer, are you, that dropped the sausage? Because cricketers don't drop sausages. Well, most of them. I think I'm the footballer for anyone. Rolling. We, um, Ian, the, the, the company most of us work for, um, it's quite a large, a large company in Britain. We had a football tournament last year. Very close ten, to the FF. Yeah, there's like 10,000 10, employees and... Um, the fine, like we we won the Scottish heats. Me, David, David was in goals, and uh, we got to the final at Etihad and finished seventh yep. out of ten thousand. So we're not we're not bad at football. But, yeah, final at the Etihad. That's a, what was wrong with the uh, Banford Park? <laughs> I have no idea where that is. We should. What you watch? <laughs> that is the mecca of football. Scunthorpe United. The mighty iron. The mighty iron. <laughs> the iron. I'm, 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 I was born and raised up here, so I support a, a team north of the border. But my mother's from Mansfield. So always, always looked out for Mansfield Towns results growing up. And it was, that, it was a classic Billy, Billy Connolly joke where it was Mansfield nil. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. I think you should be Mansfield and they scunny four. <laughs> I tell you what, um, I'll, I'll just say I'm a, I'm a Celtic supporter. And one of our best strikers of the last 20 years, we signed from Scunthorpe, a guy called Gary Hooper. What a player. Which one? Gary Hooper. Oh, well, yeah, Gary. You, you went on to play up in Scotland for that wee side called Celtic, is it? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, uh, Dermot, Dermot Desmond, Dermot rang me, uh, so I'm president of Gunny, right? And Dermot Desmond and I have been mates for many years playing golf together and what have you. And he just said to me, he said, Hooper, what's he like? I said, he scores goals. I said, he gets in the right position. He's, he's, he's just a great poacher. Next thing, I see they bought him. <laughs> and uh, he went on to be what one of the most prolific scorers, probably oh, the amount of games he played, uh, a magnificent record. And then, so, and then uh, Ziggy, so Daniel, Daniel, who's on as well, he's a Sheffield Wednesday fan. He went on and yeah. played for Sheffield Wednesday as well. Yeah, yeah but you know, I mean, Scunthorpe, Sheffield Wednesday, where would you rather be? <laughs> Doncaster. Would you rather be at Doncaster? To be honest. <laughs> no, not Doncaster. No. <laughs> <laughs> In the glass, I'm just uh, just putting that right. The chewing gum in the bottom. Oh, my youngest is just, grandson's just arrived. He's had his bath. Are you ready to come and help granddad? I'm gonna say hello to all the boys. There you go. Say hello. 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 So, ooh. Not very happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big boy. Oh, oh, hang on. This, He's this just guy. put his foot into the rib. Hang on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ian, if you like a lot of golf and you play a bit of golf, so we've got some great courses up here. I've got um, I've got a number of friends that I play golf with, and one yeah. of them, one of them was telling me that he used to he used to be on the cricket of staff at Lords MCC Young Cricketers in 1972 to 74 with you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Just, I remember Ace Taylor. I presume it's the same one. Yeah. Yeah. So he plays golf with us now. 
he's the both stand up, probably better than me. But uh, of course, you went on to be one of the best cricketers ever. Cricketers ever. So uh, he says hi. Hello, give my regards. Hello. 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 Did he say? Oh, knows everyone. Oh yeah. Just go. The cricket bats over. Ian, how did Ian, how did the wine thing come about? What made you What made you get into that? Well, I practiced for about forty years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to be honest with you, it was very. Uh, just moving these stuff for about a minute, boys. Hang on. Let's cook it because my grandson said he's eating when he gets back to work. I know where he's oh, where oh, he's gone. Oh, it's magic. <laughs> okay, that's cooking nice now. Just put these ribs back on at the top there. Oh, Get a bit more going. I'll come back to you, lads. What's your proudest innings, Ian? What's what? Next question at a time, you calm down. One question at a time. <laughs> Go for it. What's your proudest innings? Doesn't matter whether you won or lost. Whether, <laughs> what's your proudest innings? Look, as an England player and you play the Australians, um, you always want to win. You always want to beat them. But to beat them in your own country is great. But to go over there and stuff the convicts in their own back. <laughs> so that is a great feeling. feeling. <laughs> you know what? The convicts that ended up with the better island. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, we sent them over there from anywhere. It didn't have to be Ireland. <laughs> just, just just keep Thank stirring you. that stir fry up, boys. Yeah. Don't be scared to add a little bit more of the ingredients. A little bit more Tabasco. The women are going, oh, no, 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 no. They have no idea how much I put in last night. So oh, there. I'm like, I'm like Nigella Lawson, mate. I'm just so sexy with my food. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> we're going, we're going now. We're cooking. We're cooking. A little bit of fish oil. Or whatever it is. Fish sauce or whatever. Ooh. Well, I don't know, do I? It's just, I, I create the food. Yeah, you only cook in it. <laughs> yeah. it so, I was asking you earlier, like, how, why, why the wine? Why did you get into it? Apart from how drinking lots of it. Well, first and foremost, I, yeah, I do genuinely love wine and have done. Never been a real beer drinker. Um... My great mate who sadly passed away, Bob Willis. Uh, Bobby and I would, if we were on tour, we'd always go and find some wine, whether it was if we were in Pakistan or India, we might go and find it at a restaurant, a good restaurant, uh, or you'd find it at the embassy. And uh, we'd always go and hunt out some wine. Uh, the, a lot of the other guys were beer boys, a lot easier, of course. But uh, no, I've also had an interest. And in, when I got the opportunity, uh, I've been involved in wine in the last... It's our first ever vintage with uh, Jeff Merrill from Australia, Bob Willis and myself. Our first vintage was in 2001. Sorry, no, 2001, I should say. And uh, we did that. And then uh, that grew for a few years. And then um, I got the opportunity to actually blend my own wine. And uh, I've loved it. I've done it uh, now for the last, the company's been going for over two years. Uh, we've sold over a million bottles of wine in the first two years, uh, which I think is quite an achievement in itself. We, I source the wines and then I go and blend them. And right. uh, you know, we've got a new range coming out. One to look out for is the Argentinian range. Um, we've got uh, some fantastic wines at very affordable prices, you know, around five quid, five, five pounds or so a bottle. And it's very good stuff. Good. Brilliant. No, you, you'll enjoy it if you get a chance to try it. It's not yeah, that yeah. So, Ian, is, uh, is cooking a passion for you, or is it just... Uh... It was a passion, yes. Uh, yeah. Now it's business. Um, no, I absolutely loved it. Uh, I gave up... You know, look, I did 20-odd years uh, commentating, and I had a great guy working guy. But... Uh, Shelf life. Oh, thank you very much. 
Thank you. Grandson's giving me the phone. I don't know what he's telling me, but um, no, I uh, had a great time with the guy. Loved it. Uh, I think we pioneered a lot of stuff. Uh, I think that we um, maybe. I remember when I first signed for them, I asked uh, Vic Wakeling, who was then the head of uh, sport for uh, uh, Sky, and I said to him, "What do you what do you actually want to achieve?" And he said, "What we want to do is." We want you to commentate, but let, make the people at home watching think you're in that front room with them. And I think we got pretty close to that. Uh, it was a great journey, a lot of fun. But you have a shelf life, and the game's moved on, different thinking. Uh, so I'm very happy uh, to have had my time, and I want to concentrate on the wine, and that's what I'm doing now. And I uh, wish all the guys all the very best. It can't be easy commentating with uh, no crowd in the stadium, but the guys are doing pretty well, guys and girls. Uh, so yeah, um, it was just time for me to move on. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, everything's, everything goes on for so long. And what you don't want to do is overstay your welcome. Yeah. Um, Dave, Dave, sorry to put you on the spot, mate, but do you want to explain Ian and probably Ziggy as well, because he doesn't know as well. Dave, do you want to explain what happened to you eight months ago? Just because I think it's a fascinating story. Yeah, so, um, yeah I, I, all my life I've, I've been fit as a fiddle, really fit. Yeah. I was a sort of coach, um, really, you know, I used to run everywhere. Uh, but I had, I mean, I'm 49, had a bit of chest pain, um, went to the doctor. Before I knew it, uh, I needed a triple heart bypass. Fuck you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <Help>. <laughs> um, Triple heart bites. Yeah. It went well. I, had um, I had pneumonia, and twice my wife was took into a room and said, "I'm really sorry. You know, we're doing all that we can. You know, but it's touch and go." But Paul um, you no, know, I was in the hospital for seven and a half weeks, um, <laughs> and yeah, and, and now climbing Mount, climbing uh, two weeks ago, I walked eleven and a half miles. I'm full Scottish and fighting fit again, you know, and I, I kind of found the NHS enough, you know, that they're absolutely amazing, you know, um, and yeah. Well said, Dave, well said. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'm really pleased. Yeah, so. Oh, well, they have got, got, got a piece of life, so to speak. God help yeah. us. Yeah. They must be thank to the NHS. Well, so good luck, you guys. The <laughs> that he goes to to get a week's holiday, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a great lad. The actual story, sorry, sorry. I'll tell the actual story. I used to work with Dave in the same store. I'm, I was the manager, he was assistant manager, and I was leaving the store, and I was going to another store. So we had a leaving night, my leaving night, we went out and got absolutely mortal, <laughs> and then he had a heart attack. That's the actual story. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's my fault. So, <laughs> so, actually, that's a more like the truth, I reckon. That's a night out. <laughs> Real fun. How did you night in? I had the last in sack. Best <laughs> night. <laughs> it always comes out in the end, boys. Yeah. What, I'm getting some more wine. I'm getting some more wine brought to me just now. Got your eggs handy, lads. I tell you what, if I get in, if I get all the one least, yeah, I've got my eggs. Right. Well, you want to get ready. I think in the next uh, three or four minutes, we'll be going. For it. So what about your what about your golf standard then, Ian? I love to play with my eggs. What's your golf handicap? Sorry. And What's your golf handicap? How's your golf? Uh, well, actually, yeah, I used to be. I used to be off. Uh, I went down to three, and then um, the as you get off, it's not you don't hit it quite as well. Uh, and then I had the back operation on the hips, so I didn't play for two years, two and a half years. And uh, I've got to say that um, I found it quite hard coming back. But uh, I've got down, I, I went up to about, they started, which was a bit embarrassing, but they started giving me 16 shots around. And I was struggling to actually play to that. And then slowly as I got stronger and uh, the legs got stronger, back, back's recovered. I'm, I'm down now to about 10. 
and uh, I think I'll be another six months. I'll be back down to about seven or eight, I think. And I don't think I'll get any further than that. But uh, I love the golf. I love the exercise. You know, my, my wife, uh, she has a Fitbit, and I have mine on. She has to go and walk five miles to get up to ten thousand steps. You play around the golf with me and my son. Believe me, the time we've looked for golf balls both sides of the fairway, yeah. you'll do at least fifteen thousand. Yeah, absolutely. Have you got any? Have you got any favourite courses? Well, well, oh, a level. You know, there's, more, there's, more there's more cricket clubs in Scotland than there is golf courses. No, <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. But thankfully, the golf courses are a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Totally fuming here. I'm saying nothing. We just go to cricket. Right, right, lads. I'm getting close to egg time. I think right. ribs, get your ribs once more. Side <laughs> on the side. They're doing beautifully. A couple of little bit more on the right. I'm going to take these out now. Take the sausages out because they're not burning. Take the sausages out. My wife does like them burnt. There's one for you, Granny B. Foot green. Can't beat a bit of curvy. Get these out. We'll get the eggs going. What, what the yacht's on there now? I, I think everybody should show what their stir fry looks like. curvy though. <laughs> Here we go. Gravy. They're all done. So we'll get those on there. Let the ribs go. And now we'll get the old uh, eggs, boys. So, what do we do with the eggs? Right, they're doing. Now get the eggs. Eggs have been. There it goes. Move this out of the way. The eggs here. Get the lid off. Yep. Oh, lid on. Yep. Lid on. Egg five minutes ago. <laughs> off, off, Zeg, off. Lid off. I never had the lid on. <laughs> I never had the lid on either. <laughs> Let's get the egg sure. crack. I'm, I'm, I'm livid. I'm up. It's wow. fine, Ian. We'll just we'll just start again. Let's start again. Stop and move the bottle. Oh, the eggs are going on beautifully here. We'll use them all, I think, tonight. Right, eggs on. What do we do with the eggs? That's it. Just crack them over the stir fry. Uh, uh. I'd like to thank um, uh, Clyde. <laughs> if that's all right, you know, I'm not publicising any or anything like that. Oh, you know. no, mate. All right. So you're going to put the eggs all over the place now. Buy local. Buy local. Support your local butcher, mate. Support your local butcher. Leave those for a few minutes. So Ian, um, if the Dunhill Lynx goes ahead this year, are you planning on playing? Sorry? If the Dunhill Lynx goes ahead this oh, year... I love it. I absolutely love it. It's uh, on? just one of the great tournaments. And we're all yeah. keeping our fingers crossed that it goes ahead this uh, this autumn. Where yeah, is it? Everybody just loves playing in the Dunhill. It's just yeah, a no. great moment, great time. And... It, you know, what you've done it, I've been lucky. I, the only one I missed was last year, uh, not last year, the year before, with the, when I had all the surgery. And so I've been lucky enough to play in them all. Um, even when it was the old Dunhill Cup, in the, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and the, right. they played off. So, um, no, I, I, it's, it's fantastic. To, to be allowed to play some of the best courses, not just in Scotland, but in the world. You know, the home of golf, St. Andrews, Carnoustie, or I call it Carnasty, because I find yep. it is anything there nasty, I find it. And uh, you've got that, you've got King's, King's Barnes, which looks like it's been there forever and it's only probably 15 years old, 20 years old. So you're very lucky to play in that tournament. And uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. And I think what Johan Rufus has done and achieved 
uh, has been magnificent for golf. And we get great crowds now. The people come along. I don't think they come along to uh, see my golf. They come along to have a lap when I top it or duck hook it or you know, whatever. And I think they find that a lot more amusing. Mine, they have to stay on their toes because it's the odd slice. <laughs> we get the on the I actually did. I hit one lad on the head. Um, uh, last year, the year before, or two years ago, but he was actually looking. I hit, actually hit the ball well, and it was a long. It was a rescue club, and it went flying down the uh, field. And he was just on his own, no one else anywhere near him. It was straight on top of the melon. Uh, oh, yeah. or what? I uh, I used to I used to caddy at Kings Barnes, and uh, so if you ever if you ever need a bit of course knowledge, then give me a shout. <laughs> <laughs> David. David, when did you carry at Kings Barnes? I used to carry there as well. Uh, uh, I was in 2007. Why? Oh, 2007. Yeah. Yeah, I was about I was about oh nine. I did a season up there. Uh, I'm talking about here, boys. How's yours looking? All right. Yeah, good, Sorry. good, good. I think yeah. it's looking quite dapper actually. Whether I screw the eggs or not, it's the dog's ball. Oh, sure. <laughs> Ready to come up, so I'm just taking that. Salt and Percy Pepper, and we're sorted. All right, boys. Uh, my daughter says, Show them. Wait a minute. Right. There you go. The eggs all poached on top of the spicy. And then just go and serve it up. Nah, mine have still got a little bit longer to go. Yeah, over there. Doesn't get knocked over. Right, and then uh, I'll put the ribs now. We'll turn that one off. Just get the ribs on. Are we plating the eggs? Hmm. Are we plating the egg, the ribs with the eggs? No, no, just do the ribs separately and then just put them out uh, onto onto your meat plate. So I've got the sausages and the ribs. All cooked and done. Turn the gas off. I'm about doing this. I don't know why. I've been cooking with your mother. We're gone, boys. Got it all ready? <laughs> oh, look, there you are. Say hello to everyone. Wave. Wave. Oh, shit. Sorry, boys. Oh, good boy. Yeah, look, they're waving now. There you go, and everyone's waving to Arthur. Hi, <laughs> Arthur. Hey, Arthur, all your friends. Yeah, Jimmy boy. All right, guys. I think it's time to go and eat it. Let's, uh, ha let's have a look. See how you've done. Oh, right. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> is there any disaster so, uh, there, or is it all Ian, right? Ian, I'm not going to lie. I, I can't lie. I stirred my eggs in and made an ass of that. So that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but my ribs, no, the my ribs are looking, on the top. My ribs anyway. are looking lovely. All right, well, I hope the girls enjoy it, lads. Uh, it's been fantastic. It's been great. I've enjoyed sharing this with you. Uh, that looks very good. We've ever done that one. Oh man, Daniel! Yeah. Yeah, Dan, Dan. I've been up all of this all 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 day. Right, all right, boys, you've done well. Uh, well, 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 well. Okay. Very Can't good. Boy. Legend down, can you? Well, Can't let her live in here we go. Cheers. Cheers, Ian. Been absolutely fantastic, guys. Uh, well done, and thanks for your generosity. And uh, <laughs> thank your families for allowing you to destroy the kitchen or the barbecue. And cheers to you all. <laughs> cheers, boys. Ian. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, health, health and happiness. <laughs> to, to everything that goes with it. Yeah. Cheers, boys. See ya. Cheers, Ian. Bye-bye.